be thankful for what he's done for us. Yes, Lord. You know, lay the plank down. Yes, Lord. Stretch his arms wide. Yes, Amen. Yes, Amen. Yes. Give a little song to the Lord, thinking I'm buddy. Amen. And I am in my mind. Amen. In my mind, I'm, I'm sounding just like you, buddy. Like, just like you. And thank God. <laughs> Priscilla, don't correct me. Amen. She just turned and turned over and put the sheets over her head. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to continue to praise him. She knew what she was getting into when she married me. Amen. Because I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen. I still go by that Joshua 24, 15. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. He's been too good to me for me not to continue to serve him. Amen. 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 Sure, y'all looking all good and y'all all white. Amen. Y'all doing well up here. I can't do white. Amen. It'll be a spot sometime throughout the day on that white. Amen. But thank God. His sin, my sins, amen, is cleansed by the blood, amen, amen, he cleansed that spot out like OxyClean, amen, come on now, amen, so let's go to the word of God, amen, in the Old Testament here, we're going to go visit Isaiah today, in the 55th verse, or chapter, actually, of Isaiah, a very prominent uh, prophet, in the Old Testament, um, I thank God that I'm not a prophet uh, because they had to do some extreme things for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we are going to mosey on down to the 10th verse of the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Amen. And, and make sure, and I know I say it often, that you have a regular routine of reading and studying the Word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, we talk about communication, right? Communication is important in all aspects, in an organization, in a marriage with your kids. Amen? But communication is important with God. Amen? And prayer is one-way communication. I hope y'all know that. God is listening to you, but when God responds, he responds in the Word of God. Amen? And when you get in the word of God, that keeps you from being a weak Christian. Amen? A weak Christian. You get stronger when you are equipped with the word of God. Amen? You are stronger. Amen? You can fight that devil off because you have the word of God in you and through you. And you're living through the word of God. Amen? So, if we can rise for an honor, if you can, um, in honor of the reading of the word of God. Isaiah, 55th verse or chapter, and 10th verse says, For just as rain and snow fall from heaven and do not return there without saturating the earth and making it uh, sprout and providing seed to sow and food to eat. Verse 11 says, So my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please and will prosper in what I send it to do. Uh -huh. Yes. And may the Lord have a blessing in reading, hearing, and doing 
of the word of God. Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. Amen. And I, one thing that's special about coming to the church house is that we actually have the opportunity to pray together. Amen. Amen. And I know it's not biblical, but I love it. It says, families that pray together, stay together. And we're going to stay together, amen, because we're praying with each other for our community, amen. And prayer changes things, amen. How many people believe prayer changes things, amen? Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, right now, I continue to pray for someone that we've been praying for for a long time. And now we're seeing the fruits of that. The Lord is breaking this individual down. Woo, like a fraction. Even easier, like a subtraction. Amen. Just breaking it down. Amen. And you may say, man, that's messed up that they're going through so much stuff. But you got to realize when God is transforming you, he got to undo some things in order to add some things. Amen. And I'm mature enough to know that God has to break this individual down a little something, something. So he can sow that seed into him. Amen. Amen. And it's interesting because those prayers that we're doing, this individual, God is separating people that's around this individual. And what happens is God will put you in a place where you're alone so you can hear him more clearly. Amen. And I'm seeing that. I'm thank God for giving me the vision. From Thank you, Lord. I see what's going on. Yep. They're calling me with this, this, this and going on. And I'm back here smiling, like, you know, not happy that they're going through, happy because God is working on them. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And how many people got somebody that they've been praying for? Yeah. You've been praying for somebody. They keep doing that same old mess. They keep hurting themselves, hurting others. Amen? They're not doing what's right. They're doing what's right in their own eyes. And it seems like they continue to do those things. But I'm telling you, pray without ceasing. Amen? Amen. Because prayer works. Because I know I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't a grandfather who was praying for me. Yeah. Amen. And he kept saying that same thing. I thought he was just too simple. Read and pray, boy. It ain't that simple. Well, guess what? It was. Amen. Yeah. It was that simple. Yeah. And guess what the Lord had to do? Break me down. Amen. And I was going through the storm. Amen. And you got two choices when you go through the storm. You can run towards God or you can run away from him. You got two choices. But I tell you what, when you take that leap of faith for God, you'd be amazed in the rewards that come. It'd be beyond your imagination. Amen. And then for that, I know that every time a trial comes, when stuff gets tough, I'm going to get tougher. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all ain't been through nothing. Some of y'all ain't been through nothing yet. But I'm telling you, when you get through something and God is challenging you to do it his way, and when you step out on faith, come on now. Those rewards is gonna be so abundant. They're gonna say, How did you do it? Oh Jesus. come on now. Come on now. Well, let me go ahead and get into this uh prayer, amen. Because somebody needs prayer. Amen. Yes. And I want you to just think about that individual that you've been praying for. And I want you to clear your mind of that person's past, even what they did last night. And I want you to pray with all your heart for that individual and believe. The key point is to believe that God is the answer, that God is going to transform that person's life, that no matter what, before they take their last breath, God's going to have his way. Amen? Amen. 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 We just read it. Whatever God says doesn't come back void. Whatever purpose he has for that individual is not going to, no one can stop that. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I hope that you guys are believing with me today. Amen? Because I don't know, I'm not convinced. Amen? Y'all seem like, well, it sounds good. Amen? Well, it, it is good. Amen? It is good. And I'm telling you what, we need to keep praying. Amen? So stand with me, brothers and sisters. And yes, we are brothers and sisters, because I'm going to remind you. That just like I've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus, y'all been cleansed by the same blood if you accept it. And that makes us family. Amen? Jesus taught me real quick in the word. I remember it was a crowd. And they said, Jesus, Jesus, your 
mama and daddy's out there. Mm -hmm. And he says, my family is the ones who do the will of God. Yeah. Amen. So that makes us family. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can fellowship one more time yes, oh God. before you come through that sky, Father. And we're praying, Father, for the person that's in our mind. You know who that person is. Help us not to give up on them. Help us not to see them as they are, but see them as you see them, Lord. Help transform their life. Whatever you have to do, Lord, to make that person a righteous individual. Help pull that individual out of trouble. Help resolve that individual's physical and mental needs, Father. And we just know and believe that you are the answer, that you're the only one that can save them, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray over this nation, Father, as we continue to be divided by political issues, Father, when really your love and your sacrifice should bring us all together, Father. Yes, oh God. And we're just praying right now, Father, that a peace beyond understanding comes and unity comes in this country, Father. But we pray uh -huh. more importantly that your word will go forth, Father, and that it will transform lives, Father, and that it will bring us together in the name of Jesus. Yes. So we pray over the leadership of this city, this state, and this country, Father. Have mercy on you. That you guide them, that you give them instruction, Father, that you help them to protect the saints, Father. And we just thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray over the broken households, Father. It's gotten far away from your design. But we know that you will have your way in any household, Father, as long as your spirit is there, Father. Protect the kids and the children, Father, from all harm, hurt, and danger, Father. Give them an opportunity, Father, to, to see your face while it may be found. We pray over the angel of this church, Father, that you continue to bless him, Father, in all his roles as an employee, as a husband, and as a father. We just pray that he continues to be blessed, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless this church and this family, Father, as we continue to do the work of an evangelist, Father. Help us to be strong in what we're supposed to do, in the name of Jesus. We just thank you once again, Father, for life, for liberty, and for the ability to enjoy your blessings in this earth, Father. We just thank you and we love you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we all say, Amen. Yes. Do you believe that prayer? Give the Lord a hand up of praise. Amen. Keep praying. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Amen. Keep believing. Amen. Yes. yes. And we need to praise the Lord. Amen? Because you know what? I don't know about you, but my faith is so good that I know that what I just prayed for is coming to manifestation. Amen? And I'm about to praise him in advance for what he already is going to do. Amen? I don't know if that would be. Help me out, buddy. Help me.
as it worked things out for the good, amen, in your life. Amen, yeah. I can only speak to me. I know he's done worked some things out. Amen. Amen. The mighty God we serve. The Alpha and Omega. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And God has changed many things in my life. But one thing he did was he increased my bank account. Amen. When I think about 12 years ago, boy, like I said, I was running around here with pennies. Amen. I was catching rides and walking to work, or walking to church, amen, and work, amen. And God said, you know, you be faithful, and I will provide. Amen. One of my founding amen. scriptures, amen, do it. that he does, he says, seek my kingdom and his righteousness, yes. and all these things will be added amen. unto you, amen. 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 And that just really had amen. me thinking. He says, don't I take care of the birds and they don't sow? I said, that makes sense. Amen. They don't sow a thing. And every year they come back around tearing up stuff. Amen. Amen. So I'm like, if he can take care of the birds, I know he's going to take care of me. Amen. And for that reason, I always give a first fruit, first offering, amen, to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So this is our opportunity. Our opportunity to show how much God trusts us. Amen. So get your seed ready. Consult with the Holy Spirit about what he has given to you on your heart to sow. Amen. And I know that I truly believe in this. In the second book of Corinthians, in the ninth chapter, he talks about the person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the person who sows generously will also reap generously. And each person should do as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. Amen. And yes. I keep trying to tell y'all, God yes. is trying to see if he can trust you. Amen. If he can trust you with a thousand, he can trust you with five thousand. Amen. If he can trust you with five thousand, he can trust you with more. Yes. But the question is, can he trust you right now with what yes. you already have? Can he yes. trust you yes. Yes. to sow it in the way that he wants you to sow? Yes. And I'm telling you right now, that's a faith thing. Yes, that is definitely a faith thing because I was going by that 10% line. I just sold the 10%. But you know what? The Holy Spirit tested me. He said, I want you to sow this amount. Yes. I was, You know what I started doing, Sister Pierce? I started looking at the bills. I had a budget. I said, wait a minute. That's cutting into the budget. Amen. That's cutting into the budget. But I realize that God is doing something with that seed. Mm -hmm. Not just in the kingdom, mm -hmm. but in me. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know if mm -hmm. I could trust you with 50000 a year, then now I can trust you with 100000 a year. Amen. 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 See, we don't understand that. We got to be good stewards of our resources the way God wants us to do it. Mm -hmm. And if we do it his way, we win every single time. Amen. 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 And uh, we have different ways that you can sow, not only on Sundays, but on Mondays and Tuesdays too. Amen. You can sow through Cash App, you know, that United People, EPCC, number four for Christ. You know, we got the Tidely app, we got the Giblify app, and you can mail it. And now we also started. Uh, we actually have a website now. Amen. 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 We started to kind of upgrade a little thing. UPCC.churchtrack.com. And right now you see during uh, different places in the sanctuary, you see the little Q codes right there. And I just learned how to use it myself, to be honest, Pastor. All right. You know I mean? You just go up there with your phone and it'll click right in there. Amen. And we have some things that... Um, we're going to try to advance. Um, so I want you to go on there and make a profile. Amen. Because that's how we're going to keep track of the church directory. Amen. Amen. So you go on there. You can upload your picture. Some of y'all are already in there. And I purposely put in an ugly picture for y'all. So you can change it. I purposely did that. Amen. So y'all better go in there and see. Make sure y'all ain't looking crazy. Amen. Go up there. And then, yeah. Let's put it. You better go check. The brother Shantae done uploaded some stuff on y'all. I ain't had time. 
to figure out who has the best picture. Amen? So, amen. Go check. Sign in. Amen? Sign in. Don't get mad at me now because I said sign in. It's the first time everybody kind of looking at it. So, make sure you get logged in. Amen? And check. You know, uh, we're going to have it where you can give through that website and also have it where you can look at your giving history. We're still developing that. And we're going to have uh, all the events through the church on there as well. And there's going to be an opportunity for you to be able to clock in and say, I'm present. So I'm saying, amen. Amen. It's going to be some things that we're trying to move forward with. Um as we continue to advance the gospel. Amen? Amen. So make sure y'all go on there and uh, just hit one of those Q codes and you'll get on the site. Amen? And it's also on the, I think it's on the Facebook page to the site as well. Amen? But we're going to continue to try to advance on that. Amen? So everybody got a chance to sow their seed? All right. Well, let's pray over this seed. Gracious and wonderful Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow. We thank you that some of us have increased in our resources, Father, since we began to walk with you. Yes, Lord God. And Father God, we pray that we continue to sow our seeds as the Spirit moves us, Father. Help us to be faithful to listen to what that Spirit says, Father. And we just pray over the leadership of this church as we take this seed and we use it to advance the gospel, Father. Give us wisdom and and, and uh, information as we need to move forward in the gospel. Yes, Lord. We just thank you and we love you. Love you. In Jesus' precious Jesus. name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Well, God is good. Amen. Yes, he is. And he definitely has a word for today. Yes, he does. Amen. And. I tell you guys often that God will use the preacher and then have him talk about it. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it makes it way more convincing when you live it. Amen. Amen. It makes it way more Amen. convincing. Amen. But God is good. And let's just go before him so he can bless this message. Father God, I pray that you help me decrease and you increase, Father. I pray that you open up the hearts and minds of everybody that's listening, Father, and that the word that you have chosen to share shall impact and edify each person, Father, and the people around them. We just thank you and we love you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 So, um, God was working with me. And he let me know some things that I have experienced and I have been through. He just made it plain. Amen. He made it plain. But I know that many times a lot of us didn't really get the best start in life. We may not have had that two-parent home. It may have started off as a two-parent home. And some reason they divided through death or separation or whatever the case may be. It might have been a home that was filled with violence and alcohol. It might have been some type of abuse that took place in the home. And we develop bad habits from starting in that environment, right? And sometimes we even make excuses, right? Well, I'm this way because of this. And that may be true. But what happens is it cripples us, right? It cripples us as we move as adults. Mm -hmm. And that's why you find so many uh, commercials now for better help, you know, therapists, and uh, we need people to talk to to try to sort through those situations that we have, which is nothing wrong with that, amen. But I'm trying to tell you that we all didn't get to start off on the same plane. We all didn't get to start off in a mansion. We all didn't get to start off with the best education, amen. And it just kind of makes you think that you're a victim of your circumstances. Mm. I have no control now because I feel this way. Anybody ever felt like that? Mm. I just feel this way because this happened to me. I just continue to feel this way. And it's hard to overcome. It's not easy. It's not easy to overcome these things when you had a bad start in life. Mm -hmm. 
But I do want to share a story of another individual in a particular situation who had <laughs> some troubling situations. He had some troubling situations here. And I'm telling you, if you've ever heard of Brother Jacob, Brother Jacob, you know, had a lot of things going on in his life. But at one thing that he started off wrong with, which wasn't his choice, was his name. Jacob's name means that he's a deceiver, that he, that he tricks people, right? And he actually had. He tricked his oldest brother, which was his twin, out of his birthright, right? And his mama helped him. Amen. So he started off wrong. Amen. Woo, he started off wrong. Because traditionally in the Old Testament, the oldest son was the one who inherited. The oldest son was the one who was responsible for the rest of the family, right? Uh -huh. And it was very, very important for the woman to give the husband a male boy, right? Uh -huh. It was important. That was a, the, the likelihood. You know, they couldn't provide for themselves like today. Back then, they were really reliant on the husband to take care of everything. So they had to provide a male boy. Amen. And I want to tell you about a love story. Some of y'all women would love for your husband to do this too. But a love story between Jacob and Rachel. Jacob and Rachel. Uh -huh. Now, it's going to be some messed up stuff here, right? And I'm telling you, it's some messed up stuff. You can't dream this stuff up. And you know, I wanted to share that I hate to say it, but the, the minister, the pastor here, had a bad habit. Back in the early 90s, I was addicted to this reality show. I just loved to see him fight. Jerry Springer. They get up in there, they get to fighting. I said, ooh, who's going to knock out today? Who's going to get knocked out today? Amen. But I'm telling you what. Before Jerry Springer was on, it was Jacob and Rachel. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It was a mess. It was a mess in the, in the church back then. Amen. The people of God was a mess. Y'all think it was just us. Look, y'all think it was just us. It was Jerry Springer. I'm about to share y'all some Jerry Springer stuff today. Amen. I'm about to share some stuff. Now, don't judge Jacob or Rachel. Come on now. Because some of y'all done did these things. Amen. Amen. So let me tell you about Jacob and Rachel. You know, first of all, Jacob, he was trying to find a wife, but he's really on his journey. And on his journey, he ended up meeting Rachel. And Rachel was herding some sheep for her daddy. And she actually went to the well, and he saw her, and he saw that she was beautiful, right? So he helped her out, you know, trying to act like he a nice guy. But he helped her out with the sheep. You know what I mean? Moved the stones so the sheep can eat and everything. And then my man, he was pretty bold. Because the text really didn't have anything else. I'll just go by the text. The text said that he kissed her. And he started weeping out loud. I'm like, dang. He fell in love at first sight. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, woo. He wasn't playing, right? Then the mug had the nerve to say, your dad is my uncle. <laughs> so she was happy about that <laughs> and ran back and told her daddy and then her daddy was happy and the daddy ran to see him and said oh thank you because his mama was his sister so his uncle was named Laban who was Rachel's daddy all right Jerry Springer y'all someone say Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer Jerry Springer now look this is family First cousins. Now, that's you know that's what they was doing back in the day. So, Lord have mercy. So, <clears throat> Jacob went back to Laban's house, his uncle. And of course, Rachel was there. And the text said that Rachel was uh, had a lovely figure, and she was beautiful. That's the first time I heard anything in the Bible says someone had a lovely figure. I wonder if it's the same definition we have today <laughs> of a lovely figure. Amen. But anyhow, he loved Rachel so much, his cousin, that he said, you know, Uncle Laban, I will. I want your, uh, your daughter's hand in marriage, and I'm willing to work. So I will work for you seven years 
Not seven days, seven years. So I can marry Rachel. So he says, yeah, yeah, you can do that. So he done worked seven years, did his duty, right? At the end of seven years, he says, oh, I'm done. I want my wife. I want to make love to her, right? That's what he said. He says, okay. So they was having a celebration. And in the celebration, you know, they had to make sure that the marriage was concealed. So they went up in the tent. Well, I don't know how he worked this out. But Laban, instead of gave, giving him Rachel, gave him the older sister named Leah. Put Leah in the tent. Somehow he didn't know what happened until the next morning. He said, well, what? Jacob got upset. He was like, this is not Rachel. You tricked me. You gave me Leah. And I hate to say it. They said Leah has some weak eyes. I don't, know. I don't know if she had an impairment. I don't know what was going on. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about this, Leah. Your eyes is all right. But I'm just talking about the one in the Bible. You see what I'm saying? One in the Bible, something was wrong with her eyes. She at <laughs> Woo! Woo! Mm. <laughs> so he didn't want to marry uh, Leah. But he went in and finished the week out, married her. And then Laban put on this excuse, well, in this side of the country, you know, we don't let the younger daughter marry before the older daughter. But if you want to do another seven years, you can get Rachel. Now, I would have been done. You know, I love you, Priscilla, but I don't know, 14 years now, before I get to get with you, you know what I'm saying? I love you, I do it. Amen. I get in trouble if I don't say it. Well, no. Amen. But seven more years. Amen. And he did it seven more years. At the end of seven years, he did get to marry Rachel. Now, this is where it really gets interesting. Woo! Lord have mercy. Someone say Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. Woo! This, this is Jerry Springer 2,000 years ago. Amen. It wasn't in television. You know, they probably wrote it on stone about what really happened. Amen. Come on now. So Jerry Springer up in here. So he done worked to 14 years. Now he got two wives. But initially what happened was Leah was able to conceive. And she was able to give him four boys while Rachel was barren. Now, can you imagine the fight between those sisters now, right? You know, Laban, or Jacob, did not like Leah. He actually hated Leah. He was in love with Rachel, right? So he didn't really treat her right. So she was in misery the whole time because she had a husband that didn't love her. And she wanted his love because she needed to have him. Look, how many people want to be loved? You want to be loved, right? You know, we fight for love. We do a lot of different things for love. So she wanted to be loved by Jacob. So she had four boys. Now, I need someone to keep track on your phone or your pad how many kids is about to come because I'm telling you, this is Jerry Springer. There's going to be a lot of things going on. Help me keep count of the total kids. Amen. So we got four kids right now by Leah. Amen. Someone say Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer. Now, I'm telling you, Jerry Springer up in here, you ain't going to be able to keep control unless you write it down. I'm going to touch you at the end now. We got four boys that came from Leah. Amen. Not this Leah, the Leah in the Bible. Amen. Don't have no kid. Amen. Now, Rachel became angry, which is interesting. She got mad at the husband. So she went to the husband, you need to give me some kids or I'm going to die. And then Jacob, he, what? You can put me in the place of God. Only God has control of that woman. So he hurried up and rebuked her. So she wanted kids so bad that she said, here, take my maid. And you're going to have kids with my maid, right? <clears throat> and her maid's name was Zilpah. Zilpah. Okay, right. So he ended up having two kids with the maid. Amen. How many How many we up to now? Six. Oh, y'all can count pretty good. Y'all must watch Jerry Springer back in the day. I know y'all did. You're probably watching it now. I don't know. I ain't mad at you. Steve, now. Amen. Oh, Steve, Steve Oko. I, I done stopped watching all the time. I know Steve advanced. He got his own show. Amen. He got his own show. 
So Leah, and you know the funny part was, even though the maid had the kids, Leah was still able to name them. Or yeah, Rachel, I'm sorry. Rachel was still able to, to name them. Amen. Um, so we up to six kids, right? So um, Leah kind of got a little jealous and she couldn't have no kids at the time. So she said, you know what? I want you to go into my maid, because they both had their own maid, so you know they were making some money. Everybody had a maid. <laughs> he was taking care of his wife. He was taking care of them. But then, Leah said, why don't you go into my maid? So, Leah ended up having um, two more kids. So how many we up to now? Eight. Eight. And Leah got the name both of them which is interesting. And I don't know how that works because if I was the mother or father, I want to name my own kids. But somehow they was able to do that. Amen. <clears throat> so uh, what happened now, which is very interesting. Y'all never, y'all won't believe this. Y'all won't believe this one. <laughs> Leah wanted to have more kids and what happened was well and actually before that Rachel ended up having another kid God answered her prayers make sure I'm doing this right hold on a minute there's so much stuff in Jerry Springer I ain't watched in a long time I'm getting my exercise and there's so much stuff going on so what happened was Leah had one of her sons, Reuben, who went out and brought back some Madrix plants, right? Rachel wanted some. And she was like, you already took my husband, now you want to take my, my plants too? I said, oh, Jerry Springer. I was getting excited when I was reading. I said, oh, what you going to do, Leah? You about to knock her out? No, she didn't. Yes. <laughs> but what happened was she said, okay. She said, um, let me have uh, I'll let you have some if you let me have my husband for the night. And she said, okay, I'm going to let you do that. So soon as Jacob got back, and I feel bad for Jacob now because he's just a baby machine. They just, <laughs> they just want him to make me babies. Because she was pretty bold when he got back from the field. She said, you know what? I got you for tonight. Sleep with me. And I said, wow, like that? And she ended up having some more kids. But I'm going to skip on down because I can keep going. Because this is about three chapters worth of stuff. But initially what happened was between the two sisters, they ended up having 11 kids. And that's not just the two sisters, the two sisters and two servants. And guess what? Those 11 kids, and actually one sister, so 12. But those 11 brothers actually ended up inheriting a lot of things throughout the Bible. Amen. And I can go on further, but I might be here too long for y'all. And what we found out in this is that Jacob, and through all this, he continued to be blessed. He continued to be blessed despite his deceitfulness, <laughs> despite all this Jerry Springer mess going on. And he was trying to leave with his kids and his wife, but Laban wanted him to stay. So they made another deal. I wouldn't make no more deals with Uncle Laban. I don't know about you, but I'd be like, I'd be done. I'd be done. But another deal came along, and Jacob said, if, he says, I take care of the flock. I take only the speckled ones. And then Laban, deceived him again, took all the speckled ones and gave it to his son and made sure he couldn't see it so he couldn't start off with nothing. But Jacob was still blessed because at the end of the day, he had more speckled sheep than his uncle Laban. Amen? And I want to share with you 
particularly in the 30th verse or chapter of Genesis on the 27th verse. Amen. Genesis 30, 27. And the word reads, but Laban said to him, if I found favor in your sight, stay. I have learned by your divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. And then Laban said, name your wages and I will pay them. Laban recognized Jacob's calling. Mm -hmm. See, and that's what we don't realize. Mm -hmm. We don't realize is that we're focused on the wrong thing. You're focused on your circumstances. You focus on how skilled you are. You're focused on how educated you are. But your calling supersedes your circumstances. Say it again. Amen? Say Help me preach this word and say, my calling, my calling supersedes, supersedes my, circumstances. my circumstances. Jacob has been through some mess. He done started off in a whole bunch of mess. I'm surprised that he even came home because there was a lot of mess, a lot of drama. But at the end of the day, his calling was higher than his circumstances. And when you realize that your calling is higher than your circumstances, now you can act and walk in a certain way because you know for a fact that despite the mistakes that you make, despite what everybody else is trying to do, despite anything else that's outside your realm, that the calling will go forward regardless. Amen? Amen? Help me preach this morning and say, my, my calling, my calling will, supersede will supersede my circumstances. My circumstances. I've been called. I don't know about you, but I've been called. Amen. And I know that my calling will not fail. And you want to know why my calling will not fail because I know God can't fail. Come on now. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? God can do anything but fail. And when you've been called by God, we got to continue to walk in that calling. We got to continue to shut down the circumstances. We give too much attention to the haters, amen? We should give more attention to the calling, amen? I'm not worried about my circumstances no more. I might be concerned, but I'm not worried because I know at the end of the day, God's going to have his way. Yes, amen? Amen. Amen. amen? amen. So I got to bring y'all on a little walk here. So get, get your word out because I'm about to share with you something that you can't say Brother Shante said. You got to say the word of God said. Amen. amen. So I want to bring you to Isaiah 55 and 10 again, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Isaiah 55 and 10. And Isaiah 55 and 10, he says, For just as rain and snow fall from heaven, and do not return there without the earth, uh -huh. and making it sprout, and providing seed to sow and food to eat, so my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what it please and will prosper in what I send it to do. Amen? Amen. I don't know. How many people believe that? Amen? Amen? I believe that. How many people believe that in regards to your calling? Amen? That what did he call you to do? It will not return empty. That the purpose will take place. Amen? Amen. 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 That there's Amen. nothing that God can do that won't fail, amen, that he will not fail in what he's called you to do. And I don't know about you, but I know God has called me to do some things, amen? And despite my circumstances, my calling is greater. And when people look at me, they're going to know that my calling is greater because I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to build myself up in it, amen? I know for a fact that what he said won't fail. I know for a fact that despite my education, that I can still do it. How do yeah. I know that, buddy? I know that because God said, oh, I'm going to make you a social worker without a social worker degree. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. He said, he's going to make things happen. He said, 
I'm gonna give you a house even though you filed bankruptcy. Come on now. Y'all don't understand y'all don't understand what y'all don't know what I'm saying. They don't know what's going on, Pastor. They don't know what's going on. Let me praise for y'all because y'all don't understand this. Y'all ain't been through anything, but I know that my calling is greater than my circumstances. Amen. When you got people hating on you, trying to hurt you, trying to harm you, and despite what they try to do, you still prevail. Come on now. I don't know about you. Come on. Woo. Woo. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Help me out, family. Come up here for a second, Kelly. Look at that. Look at that. Come here, baby. You know what I love about Kelly? <laughs> Kelly got a calling on her life. Amen. You know how I know she got a calling in her life? My favorite story. I ain't going to say it all the way. <laughs> but she said, you know better. You've been baptized. <laughs> and you know what else? Know she better. loves church. Amen. Amen. She loves God. Yeah. Yeah. When her parents don't wake up, she says, I need to get a ride to church. Because <laughs> I'm going to church. Amen. And you keep being you. Yes, Amen. Because God got a calling on your life. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Your calling is more important than your circumstances. Amen. Amen. Wake and up, she man. got something on her. Amen. Wake up, man. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, let's keep traveling the word of God. Amen. We got to keep traveling. Go to Romans 11 and 29. Or Romans 11 and 29. So y'all y'all going to believe before the end of the day that your calling is bigger than your circumstances. And I hope that you experience that. And if you haven't experienced that, that's because you never gave God a try. When your circumstances came up, you fixed it instead of you let God fix it. When your circumstances came up, you was focused on the circumstances. You didn't run to God, you ran away from God. And that's why it's hard for you to testify today that your calling is bigger than your circumstances. But praise God, you have another chance. Thank you, Lord. You have another chance. You're still breathing. Yeah. And believe me, God loves to give you the test over and over again until you pass it. <laughs> because like you said, if he has a calling on your life, it's not going to come back void. He didn't say what is going to happen. Amen. It might take five years. You may fail the test for 10 years straight. But it's going to happen. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you, but I just believe that. Amen. That I'm in, that I know that the God's calling is bigger. Amen. So in Romans 11 and 29, it says, since God's gracious gifts and calling are irrevocable. Oh, man. I don't know about you, but that doesn't make me feel so good. That makes me feel that when God says something about me, he's not going to change his mind. Nothing can change. No matter how hard it is, it's going to happen. Amen? And you got to realize that your calling it supersedes your circumstances. Amen? Yes, supersedes. So when I think about that gift, because it says gracious gifts, that means that he gave us plenty of gifts, that you have everything that you need right now in order to fulfill your calling. You just need to activate it. Gifts plus skill, you're going to grow. You're going to advance. You're going to supersede those circumstances. It's meant to be difficult when you're walking with the Lord. It's not going to be easy. You probably have been through some things in your childhood. You probably been through some things last night. But regardless of what you've been through, regardless of how bad it's been, God can overcome that calling. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm looking at millionaire back there, and I'm like, she done superseded over her circumstances. Amen. She done came to the church broken down, and now she's built up, building other people up. Her calling was stronger than her circumstances. Amen? Amen. And I remember that we all have a testimony. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Maybe some of us got a testimony because only a couple of y'all said amen. I got a testimony. I testify amen. I don't know about y'all, but I testify that the calling is bigger than the circumstances. Amen. amen. And we're going to keep writing. We're going to go to John 15 and 16. John 15 and 16. And in John 15 and 16, now this is Jesus talking directly, right? 
A lot of y'all are thinking differently, but read this. You got to understand this right here. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you that you should go out and produce fruit and that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Come on now. A lot of you guys think when you made that decision to accept Christ, when you got in that, that pool, that you made that decision. You just accepted the decision that was already made about you. Come on now. You accepted the decision that was already made. It was already done. From the time he was in the womb, from the time he was in the womb, he planned out your whole life. He knew what decisions you were going to make. He knew what you was thinking the whole time. And he already arranged everything, every circumstance, because at this particular time that you was going to supersede those circumstances. And I don't know about you, but anybody that been through some stuff know that, oh, I've been through that because I was training. Uh -huh. Amen. I've been because that trained me up. That don't talk me from things. Amen. See, if I didn't go through a bad divorce, I wouldn't be a good husband today. Come on now. Amen. Come on now. You got to learn some things. Some things you got to get taught. Amen. How many of those kids you can listen and you'll do? Or how many of those other people is like, I need to learn from my own self. Amen. 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 And those ones that learn for their own self, you're going through the fire. Amen. 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 And you, you get what I call that spiritual butt whooping. But when I look at that, John 15 and 16, I realized that by him choosing me, he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And see, a lot of people here, there's things about you that only God knows about you. And you don't know that yet. Because he called you. But constantly, he's reaching out to you, trying to get your attention. Say, you know, you're not supposed to be here. This is who you are. This is who you really are. This is not who you are. We're so settled in who we are now. We're so comfortable that we don't even explore into who we really can be. Don't you realize when he called Peter to be the rock of the church, he was weak? He just denied Christ three times. He was no rock at that time. And he said, you're going to be my rock. He spoke life into him. Peter didn't even know what he was talking about. And the same thing is true for you. Right now, you feel like you accomplished some things. Take that out of your mind because you haven't accomplished nothing to what God is going to do for you and through you in the future. Amen? Amen. Amen. And the way we get there is by being uncomfortable. The way we get there is by acknowledging our calling. I'm bold with my calling. Amen? You got to be bold. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, boldness is one of your attributes. Amen? Amen. I'm bold about what he's done. I'm bold about what he's going to do. I'm bold that he's the answer to everything. Amen? I talked to some preachers. They're like, well... You know, Jesus is not the answer to everything. I said, he is in my book. He the answer. Amen? He the answer. It's not just that simple, Brother Shante. It is for me. I don't have the answer on how it's going to get done, but I do know that Jesus will get it done. Amen. Because whatever word goes out doesn't come back void. That whatever purpose he wants to accomplish, it will be accomplished. Amen? And because we put a time frame on it doesn't mean that it's God's time. Amen. Come on now. I'm trying to teach y'all something today. I'm trying to help empower y'all today. Because some of y'all are going through some stuff right now as we speak. And even though you're going through some stuff, you're looking at it the totally the wrong way. You should be looking at your calling. And what you've been called to do, you should speak that to your circumstances. I'm a light in the midst of darkness. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm a child of the high God. You should be speaking these things to your circumstances. To that person that we was praying for today, you got to speak that into their life. Quit looking at them the way they are and looking at them for who they're going to be. You'll treat them differently, right? Yeah. you treat them differently. If I knew that my beautiful little niece Sophia was going to be the next president, the first female black president, right now she'd probably get more gifts than the other one. Amen? Because <laughs> I know she's going to be president. Amen? Oh, she'd be a president one day. She might be 60. She might be 70. She might get on my nerves. She might pick her boogers. But you know what? She's going to be the president. Amen? 
So I'm going to treat her differently. So if we start looking at our calling and who we're going to be, we start treating ourselves differently. Mm. We wouldn't accept so much mess in our life. You got to acknowledge your calling. Someone help me preach and they say, my calling, my calling supersedes, supersedes my circumstances. My circumstances. You got to believe it. You have to believe it. You have to push it. You got to continue to do it. Let's go to another verse. I'm going to get y'all up with one more. Second Peter 1 and 10. Let's mosey on over here. Second Peter 1 and 10. Amen. And Second Peter 1 and 10, he says, Therefore, brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. Because if you do these things, you will never stumble. Come on now. He's given us the, he's given us the key. He's given us the key. I don't think y'all got that. Let me read that one more time for you. Therefore, brothers, make every effort to confirm your calling. And election. Election meaning that God elected you to be in heaven. Not everybody's going to make it to heaven, but you've been elected. I already know I've been elected. I can't speak for y'all. I'm speaking for me. I've been elected. I'm there. Amen. Like I said, I'm already leaving my planet. I got my body picked out. I'm good. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm there. I don't, I don't, you know, I can't speak for y'all. That's why I'm talking to y'all because I want y'all to be the same assurance that you're going. Amen. But you know, he said you got to give effort to confirm that, right? How do we do that? How do we give effort to confirm our calling? One, we start asking God, if you don't know your calling, what is your calling? God, what is my calling? But you already know some basic stuff that you've been called to. You've been called to spread the gospel. You've been called to do that. Do it. I've been called to fellowship with brothers and sisters. Do it. I've been called to live God's way. Do it. Right? I know I've been called to do these things, right? Then do it. You're going to fall short doing it, but I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep falling forward until I get it right. Amen? Because I know at the end of the day, my election and my calling has been confirmed. But I'm confirming it in my mind. Because when I confirm it in my mind, now I act differently. Now I walk differently. Now I got more empowerment now. Amen? Now I'm controlling these circumstances because I'm talking my calling into it. Amen? Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. Amen. Amen. They ain't hearing me, buddy. Hey, I ain't responsible. I'm just giving y'all the seat. I ain't responsible. Lord. <laughs> Come on now. Now, when we're confirming our calling and election, because if you do these things, you will never stumble. Look at that. We will never stumble if we continue to confirm our calling and election, right? So, if we're stumbling, that means we're not putting in enough effort to affirm our calling, right? Let's just be realistic. You know, the, the first nine verses of the chapter talks more about how you confirm that. I'm not going to go into that. I can get a whole other sermon. But read it for yourself. Study for yourself. If you have an issue that you're dealing with, I plead with you. We'll quit, turn off Oprah, turn off Dr. Phil, turn off Better Help, come on now, and go to the Bible first. Amen? Yeah. I'm not saying those things ain't helpful, but there's a difference between godly things and good things. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Lord. What does the Bible say about finances? What does the Bible say about raising my kids? What does the Bible say about relationships? Amen? I'm going to see what that has to say. Amen. Uh -huh. And any person that's talking to me that's against that, I got to get a new person. Let's be realistic. I believe in therapy. I believe in therapists. But all, not all therapists is good for you. Come on now. I got some therapist friends. I'm thinking like, dang, that's your life. You teaching people this? You in control of the fragile mind? No wonder they messed up. You made man. They trust in you because you got a degree. You see what I'm saying? You can't trust everybody that got a degree. You got to qualify them. Look, the same person that graduates with a D and the same person that graduates with an A, it doesn't say that on their the, uh, certificate. Amen? Amen? 
I'd be wanting to ask the doctor, what was your grade point average? Come on now, what, what college did you graduate from? Did you go to night school when you were operating on me? You see what I'm saying? We don't ask those questions. We just trust what the doctors say. And I'm not saying don't trust. I'm not saying don't use medic medication. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is put it in order. My order is God. Godly ways. God created doctors, therapists, and everything else, and medication. You see what I'm saying? So we can use that too. But he didn't use that to replace us or replace him. Amen? That's not there to replace him. That's just the aid. That's the tool that he used. But if we don't use it in the right way, it's not going to help us. Amen? It's going to destroy us. So how many people are ready to confirm they, they uh, call them? Amen. Yes. You got to be ready to put in that effort. Amen. You got to be ready to do it. Amen. Continue. Because help me preach this morning. Say, my calling, my calling. Supersedes, supersedes my circumstances. My circumstances. So, are you going to develop your calling? Amen. Developing your calling means developing your mindset. I'm developing mindset. The calling is already going to take place. That's on autopilot. That's going to happen. But you got to start believing what God is saying about you. That's the hard part. The hard part is I got to believe that. Amen? Amen. So now I got to put in the work, in the word. If God called you to be the, the best uh, president in the world, I'm going to start studying about politics. Mm -hmm. And God said, you're going to be a doctor that's going to heal many people, not only with modern medicine, but also with spiritual medicine. I'm going to make sure I add skill set to my calling. Amen? Y'all got to realize that Paul, before God called him, he had a lot of training in spirituality. Amen? He was a Pharisee. And God used that on his journey to the Gentiles. See, your walk right now is going to help you in your calling. But you got to do that development. You got to do that development. I mean, people believe that their calling is bigger than their circumstances. Amen. All right. I got a few people. Amen, Lord. I got a few people. Thank you, Lord. You're learning something. Thank you. That's going to help me out. I get a spiritual whooping if I don't do right. Your calling, it supersedes your circumstances. And if we could just rise, because sometimes... There's people that have not accepted even the call to be saved. They're still struggling with the fact that it's just that simple. That all you have to do is say, Lord, I'm not getting everything right. And I want to do things your way. I don't know what this is all about. But I know one thing. I'm committed to you now. I want to be who you called me to be. I need your help to show me who I am. I don't have to consult with my friends or anybody else who I am. I need to consult with you, Lord. And if that's you today, I want you to just contact me. I want to have a conversation with you. Because God put it in my heart that there's a big deception in society today about who we are and how, who God is. And I would love to introduce you to Yahweh, to Yeshua, the man who transformed and changed my life. About 15, 20 years ago, I would have never, ever guessed I'd be here. Never, ever guessed. But God saw something in me. God put something in me that I didn't even know. And if he put something in you, which I believe he did, but you have to believe it, contact me. Maybe you already accepted that calling. Maybe you've been with the Lord for a while. Or maybe you slipped off. It happens. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all get out of relationship with God at some point. Well, it's not too late. You're still breathing. You're here. And 
as long as you're here, redemption is possible. And as long as you've been caught, you already know that that word won't come back void. What he spoke about you when you was born is true today. And this is your opportunity to get back with God. And if you want prayer, just come up to the altar and allow him to anoint you with the Holy Spirit, this oil, and you accept that you've been called, you've been sanctified, that is already done. And it's an act of faith to come up. It's not easy. But God didn't want to make it easy because he wants you to choose him. It's like in John 15, 16, he already chose you. He already planned your life. He already made you a victim. He already made you a light in the midst of darkness. But only you can make that choice. The Bible says, if you're sick, go to the elders and let them put hands on you. And that's not just a physical sickness. That could be a spiritual sickness. Maybe you're spiritually dead right now. You try to read the Bible and you just fall asleep. You try to stick to your routine and you just distract it. God wants to hear from you. But he's not going to force you. But he already knows his calling is made affirmed. Every time he talks, he doesn't come back for you. His gracious gifts and his calling doesn't come back. It's irrevocable. It's already set in motion. It's done. And all you got to do is believe. All you got to do is keep confirming. Keep pressing on. Because you're powerful. More than you can ever think of. And that person that you've been praying for is going to have such a testimony. I already know the person I'm praying for is in the works. And I'm not going to put a time frame on God. But I believe that that individual is going to be somewhere testifying about the goodness of the Lord. How the Lord changed that individual's life. I'm just thankful for it. Because I love this individual so much. More than that individual will ever know. But I thank you for hearing this message. And I pray that you implement it in your life. And I pray that you believe it. That your calling supersedes your circumstances. I know it's not customary when I do this every time. Every time my spiritual father is in, I got to hear his last word from him. So give a hand clap of praise for God. Praise God, saints. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that wonderful message by Pastor Shante. Truly, amen, the Lord wants to make challenges us to make our calling and election sure. We do that by being obedient to God's call and to allow the Holy Spirit to lead our lives. Amen. Aren't you glad God has given you his spirit? Amen. To lead you and guide you in all truth. Amen. The Holy Spirit is your comforter. He'll be there to call, to talk to you, to guide you as long as you're willing to yield to his power. Amen. We thank God for all of you. Truly the Lord is good. Amen. Summertime is going by quick. We are doing so many things, amen, enjoying the sunshine and it's in and out, amen, but I want to encourage you to be watchful, be watchful and stay in prayer, amen, amen, be watchful and stay in prayer, you know, uh, seem like every week, every other week we hear about some mass shooting somewhere, so, but just pray, amen, and be watchful. Be on guard. Wherever you go, just be on guard. Amen? Amen. And God will protect you. Thank God for protection. Amen? Amen. 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 Pastor Shante, we thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for your faithfulness. Amen. And uh, next, 
upcoming weeks, Pastor Shante is going to be out. Amen. Doors are open and sharing the gospel. And it's so good to see all of you. Amen. And I am so encouraged when I see you. Amen. I picked up Sister Carletta this morning. I started shouting. Amen. Because God is good. Amen. Amen. Uh, the mayor, praise God. I know I know he's doing a lot of stuff. Pastor Shante told me, Brother Daniel is doing a lot of stuff. Amen. And so we want to keep each other up in prayer. Amen. Sister Nicole, so good to see you. Yeah, thank you. Praise God for you, girl. Amen. God is good. Annie? Yes. Amen. Yes. Sister yes. Christina? Yes. The Lord has a word for you. Don't fret. Don't fret. Amen. Ain't my mom beautiful? Yes. Oh my yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for my lovely wife. Open house. God's son yesterday. Amen. Amen. Turned 18 this past week. Boy, these kids grow up fast. Amen. So we thank God for all of you. Sister Jones, so good to see you. Yes. Is all well? Yes. Amen. Let's raise our right hand. <laughs> God be with you. in your ways. And we all said, I 